Wow. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We are um, we're here today. It's a really great day, and what a great crowd we have today, and it's a crowd worthy of this moment. So thank you, everybody, for coming out. Um, I want to begin by thanking our auditor, Diana DiZaglio, and our partners in the legislature for, for being here today. That includes the original legislative sponsors of this, our speaker pro tem, Kate Hogan, and Senator Sear, who co-chaired the PFAS Interagency Task Force and made the recommendation to ban PFAS in firefighter gear. To Senator Moore, Rep Hawkins, who kept this issue at the forefront of discussions on public safety and PFAS exposure, we thank you. And we thank our legislative colleagues, Rep. Decker, Rep. Cairns, Rep. Paulino, Rep. Kahn, Rep. Garbley, Rep. Howard, Senator Timothy, Rep. Doherty, Rep. Zaros. I see there are others, I'm sure, who will be joining us, and we'll make a note if we inadvertently overlooked anyone. But you know, just really appreciate the work of the legislature in getting this, in getting this to, to my desk. Um, I also acknowledge Councillor Devaney, whose husband was a firefighter. We thank you for being here today. And as you can see, um, by just a quick look around, we're joined by many of Massachusetts' finest, our firefighters. And so to Rich McKinnon, president of the Professional Firefighters Association of Massachusetts, and all the firefighters who stand with us today, we say thank you. You know, every day um, I'm reminded, and I was just returning from Salem when trucks passed, I'm reminded of the work that firefighters do and the calls that they are responding to and the ways in which they are putting themselves in harm's way for our benefit and for public safety. That includes, of course, selflessly running into buildings to make sure that no one is left behind, often sacrificing their own time and their safety, of course, in the process, all in an effort to protect ours. You know, I think about the way they've responded to, um, to drownings, to, to severe floods and terrible weather events. Um, and I appreciate their courage in confronting physical dangers and unknown um, scenarios in their dedication in doing their jobs. It's one thing, too, to, to, to run into a fire and you can see the blaze and you guys can feel the heat. It's, a, it's another thing, this silent killer that's been out there actually among us for years, and that's PFAS, these dangerous, dangerous chemicals. Um, they're in too much of our stuff, but certainly um, we know they've been in protective gear, they've been in foam, um, and these are really, really serious matters. I'm looking at my former colleagues in the Attorney General's Office and the Environmental Protection Division. It's great to see Chief Betsy Harper here and Andy Goldberg as well, who also have been long advocates for addressing the health impacts and the environmental impacts of these chemicals. So, you know, to some of us, PFAS chemicals, forever chemicals, are something that we've come to know a lot more about in recent years with coverage and focus and attention. Um, as I said, they've been used in protective personal equipment, uh, used by firefighters because of their ability to withstand high heat and the penetration of, of water and oil. But, but the devastating impacts are so clear. You know, higher incidence of cancer, severe repercussions um, as well on, on, on health, and, um, and we needed to, to act. And, and that's why Massachusetts, and I'm really proud of Massachusetts, for making the tackling of PFAS such a priority. As Attorney General, I sued the PFAS manufacturers. Thank you to the team that did all the work and put the case uh, together, and who continues that under Attorney General Campbell's leadership. Um, because, you know, that was about holding manufacturers accountable for ignoring, ignoring the serious risks that they were putting uh, people too, and, and the risks they were posing for, for public health. Um, in that process and developing that case, I know that the AG's office continues to work hard with the firefighters, unions and advocates, and loved ones, some of whom join us today, who've been so negatively impacted by these chemicals. I've repeatedly urged Congress to act um, and to take steps to enact stronger standards for PFAS, and that includes uh, urging the EPA to take action as well. 
uh, and also for funding to assist our communities who are going to have to pick up the bill on remediating and redressing the problems caused by PFAS. I'm proud that our state budget, and thank you to all of our legislative colleagues for this, uh, we include 18 new positions dedicated entirely to PFAS work in Massachusetts. I don't know another state that is doing that, that is pursuing this to that degree. We're also funding equipment and screening programs to protect against occupational cancer, the greatest threat that our firefighters face. And we're continuing with our successful Take Back program. This is about buying back all that dangerous uh, for, uh, foam that's out there that contains PFAS. I think there's 400,000 pounds of it from over 160 fire departments and other facilities that we have been collecting and ensuring uh, that that foam is never going to be released uh, and creating harm to the environment and public health and to our firefighters. Today is about taking yet another step and so we're all proud to stand here today to officially move to end PFAS chemicals from being added to or sold in firefighter gear. This bill requires manufacturers to provide clear notice of when PFAS is present in their products and by 2027, which will be here before we know it, prohibit, prohibit the sale of products with intentionally added PFAS all together because it's absolutely critical that our firefighters have the information about what they're wearing, what they're exposed to, and that we're doing everything we can to ban this stuff. Today, Massachusetts is putting health and safety uh, and the well-being of our firefighters first by phasing out the use of these dangerous chemicals that have caused so much harm to our communities and to our heroes. So I'm grateful to all who are here today. I'm grateful to the firefighters and family members, labor leaders, legislators, environmental advocates um, who are all here who worked so hard to pass what really is a life-saving bill. I thank you and I now turn it over to a champion on this issue in the legislature, Senator Mike Moore. Uh, thank you, Governor. Um, thank you for putting, organizing this today and for the signing that we're all going to be watching soon. But I also want to thank um, the auditor, uh, Diana DiZaglio. The original bill that was filed, um, she was the original sponsor. I think it was actually six years ago. And she was a sponsor and um, she reached out and I was able to uh, be the co-sponsor. And that was probably one of the first times I heard of PFAS. And then, so this was before the omnibus bill and every, all these, the studies that had started rolling out. So she was one of the first ones to identify this and work with the firefighters to um, bring it to our attention. But I'm so excited to be here with all of you to support the brave men and women who have put their lives at risk on our behalf, who put on turnout gear every day and risk their lives protecting our communities. For far too long, this gear has posed a silent risk to their health and safety, to our firefighters. The poisonous PFAS chemical slowly shedding out of the suits and into the body, into their bodies, um, have hurt so many firefighters. So many of them have, um, have so many um, cancer that, you know, for years we've looked at research or we've looked at ways to try to address it. And I think this is one area that we never thought. We thought the cancer that they were getting was resulting from their exposure to chemicals or other types of material uh, that when they were entering these fires. But it turns out it was in the very gear that we were giving them to protect them. That's sad. It's sad that, we, that that was going on for all these years. Um, from 2002 to 2019, cancer accounted for two-thirds of firefighter deaths. According to the International Association of Firefighters, a number that is shocking. While there's still a lot to learn about PFAS, it is clear that Forever Chemicals, a clear and well-documented link to cancer, um, affects the immune system, birth defects, colitis, and other devastating diseases. Um, we must take, we must not ask our firefighters to accept these risks any longer. We have the power and the duty to reduce the risk of PFAS exposure 
for these brave men and women. With the stroke of the pen shortly um, by our governor signing this into law, um, their, their health and safety will be one step closer to being protected by, the, by us, um, by the legislature, by the people who count on them. Um, Beginning in 2000, as the governor said, beginning in 2027, PFAS will be banned from firefighter turnout care, and in the meantime, manufacturers will be required to disclose if chemicals were used, if PFAS were used in the equipment. The incredible achievement belonging, achievements belonging to the life and advocates of, uh, the incredible achievement we're talking about here today, and I don't know if she's here. Um, Diane, she is. Diane Carter. Where is she? If I can just point out, this is one of my constituents. Now, legis legislators, we get all the credit and praise. We get to come up here and speak on behalf of these great initiatives. But Diane, who's the wife of a Worcester firefighter, Paul, is the one that brought this to our attention. She's the. To the dismay of many of us, because she is a, a strong advocate, and when she gets your cell number or your email address, <laughs> watch out. Um, and this is the first step. She's not done, and we're not done. This is again, this is the first step of hopefully of many more um, accomplishments we're going to have in this um, area addressing PFAS and exposure um, to firefighters and to other um, to the people in general. It's a chemical that should never have been used, um, and hopefully we'll stop it as time goes on. Um, but again, I just, want to I just want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank the firefighters. As you all know, we were in session that last day 23 hours, and the executive board for the uh, firefighters, they were there all 23 hours. They sat up in the Senate gallery. After, we've, after we passed the bill, they went to the House. They sat there until the House enacted the bill. So, you know, again, the work that's gone into this and the advocacy, um, it's, by, it's, it's by so many of us, um, the sponsors of the bill, everyone who's voted on the bill, um, and now with the, with the help of the administration, I think this shows what government should do and what we can do. Um, so, I wanna th again, I want to thank everyone for being here, um, and I really do want to um, thank the firefighters and Diane and Paul for bringing this to our attention. Um, thank you. I'm sorry, I totally forgot. And the sponsor in the House, who the moment that that bill was, that we passed it in the Senate, the call went to Representative uh, Hawkins. He then did all the work in the House, putting, putting the effort to try to get uh, this bill moving. And obviously the fact uh, we're here, shows how successful he was in his advocacy for this. So, Thank Representative you. Hawkins. Thank you. And I'm thinking on the way in, this is a great state to live in, and if you, you don't need a reminder, but here's a reason this is a great state to live in. This is the strongest bill to date to protect firefighters from PFAS and their, fire, and their turnout gear, and I'm proud to be part of that. The first year that I was in office, I went to, in my district in Attleboro, I went to three firefighters' funerals, and they were all too young, and it was all cancer. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened. And I'm deeply honored to be, to be selected to file this bill on the House side. I can remember sitting down with, with a, a pile of papers from Clean Water Action, who's the scientists in the group who put this, helped put this together, PFFM. Uh, the firefighters, and, and it's an honor for something so important to them. There are people dying from this, and, and I was chosen to actually file the original legislation. Firefighters Union PFFM is doing exactly what a union should do. I'm a card-carrying union member, and I've got to respect that they're looking out for the safety and their well-being of their members first. That's the right way to do things. Uh, I, need to, I need to be very respectful to the amount of work that it takes to get this through. I'm thinking of the work that Senator Sear did, that Speaker Pro Tem Hogan did on this. Uh, Senator Moore was on the phone with me the, the minute that it passed in the Senate. 
Uh, this is Speaker's office working on this, Ways and Means working on this. So much work goes on behind the, the scenes that nobody sees. Nobody sees this. You think everything's quiet and there's nothing going on, but there's staff working on this in all those offices. Other, other colleagues of mine coming out to talk to me at my desk to give me, to give me very constructive uh, advice on, on how, to, how to push this through. And we passed it at 9 o'clock in the morning on the second day that we were there. So uh, uh, thank you to the firefighters for your continued advocacy. You, you bring new, new meaning to the way things are supposed to be done. Thank you to, to Clean Water Action. Uh, you're amazing partners to work with. And it's my honor again to introduce Rich McKinnon, who's the president of PFM, and he brings new meaning to the word gentleman. Thank you. It's my honor to be here today for this long-awaited bill signing. And this doesn't happen alone. It's a true team effort. As firefighters, we're used to working together uh, with each other in a full team effort. And this wouldn't happen without our partners in the legislature, both in the House and the Senate, and to our governor uh, for realizing the importance and the scourge that we face every day with occupational cancer among our firefighters. And within the PFFM, I thank our legislative agents, Paul Jakes and Craig Hardy, who are up here every day advocating for our bills. And I thank our brothers and sisters across our great International Association of Firefighters and to our leadership of the IAFF and their staff for, for, by, for providing us data and advocacy to get this legislation passed and to Diane Carter for finding what, what the problem was with PFAS and everything going on with our turnout gear and how dangerous it is. And to Kathy Bell Crosby, who put up funding through the Last Call Foundation to do an independent test to prove that PFAS was in our gear. But the most important part of getting this bill done was our 12,000 members, our 12,000 firefighters across the state that when we put out a call to action, they reacted and, and called, their, called their state reps and let them know the importance of this legislation. You know, in the fire service, we have a phrase, and it's called first do. And what first do is are those first companies that respond to an incident, that go to work at a fire. And we take great pride in being first do when we respond to those emergency incidents. This bill makes Massachusetts first do in, in striking out occupational cancer in our fight in occupational cancer. This is the strongest language in our nation. We will be the first active state of only two to ban the selling of PFAS turnout gear. I'm very proud of our membership. Uh, I'm very proud of our leadership here in the House and Senate and our governor. Make no mistake about it. This next generation of firefighters will save lives. Their lives will be saved. Their families will not have to go through what the diagnosis, treatment, and unfortunate death of cancer that many of them have already faced in the fire service and are facing today. So I applaud um, Massachusetts for stepping up and being first due in our fight against occupational cancer. Thank you. We're going we're gonna to get the uh, table ready, but before we close, I just want to uh, bring up Auditor Desaglio, who's been a longtime champion of the firefighters, and I know this legislation means a lot to her. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much to, to uh, everyone for the opportunity uh, to be here today due to the passage of this amazing legislation. Uh, for those uh, who I don't have the privilege and honor of knowing a little bit about me, I used to work for the firefighters. Uh, I was chief of staff to the previous state president. I had the opportunity to work with uh, most of the folks you see behind me, uh, not just the firefighters, but also all the legislators on uh, this important legislation. I want to thank uh, Senator Moore, Representative Hawkins, and everybody else who uh, really diligently carried the water on this after uh, I had originally sponsored this through working with the firefighters. 
Uh, one of the reasons why this was such an important piece of legislation for me, uh, I was uh, born in Methuen, but I was raised in Lawrence as well, and uh, my godfather and my uncle uh, were both firefighters. My, my uncle John is a firefighter in Andover, uh, and my uh, late godfather, Dave, Dizzy, he was known uh, lovingly by his Lawrence firefighters, uh, was a firefighter in the city of Lawrence. He got cancer, very challenging to, to prove why uh, and, and how that happened. Got cancer, suffered for some years, battling cancer until we eventually lost him. When the firefighters came and spoke with me about this issue, it really uh, struck a chord. And I knew that this was something that I wanted to pursue, not just on behalf of my late godfather, but on behalf of all firefighters and their families who are battling the scourge of cancer and haven't had an advocate up until this point where our governor and our legislators, alongside of our firefighters in Massachusetts, have diligently worked together to bring this bill forward to pass it into law. And I personally want to say thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank everybody here for all of your advocacy, all those members, all those firefighters that called your legislators to make sure this got done, all of the advocates, all of the families uh, of our firefighters who know that every day your loved one could run in to a burning building and not come home. I want to thank you for your service, for your sacrifice, and for your love and dedication to our communities. Thanks so much.